<laughs> so why don't we, we wanted to give you a chance to introduce yourself too, Viviana. It, you know, because we're going to actually be showing the dream work process live and in person here on the podcast. Yes. Yay. Well, I'm Viviana. I'm a flutist. I have performed in 133 countries because early on I knew that I wanted to travel the world. And I love performing because I'm a Leo. <laughs> I have a Grammy nominated CD that was from my classical album entitled Traveling Sonata. And I currently teach at UC University of California, Santa Cruz. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> and you already yes, said before you've been doing some dream work for the last year and a half or so, right? A year and a half, two years? Well, well since the grand pause, as I like to refer it, <laughs> I, I had time. I wasn't traveling the planet. So I, and I wanted to do more dream work. I have a, a dream group here in Half Moon Bay. We meet just once a month if that much it wasn't enough for me since i had all this time so i googled dream work and i found billy ortiz mm -hmm. yes and well that was a little over a year ago and i just dove into the deep end i just became obsessed so here i am <laughs> so you are obsessed with music mm. is that a good word obsessed oh yeah wow. In music, performing, and traveling, and now dreams. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So at, at multiple levels of of obsession <laughs> that that you have, and <laughs> and as, as I uh, listen to this and know you a little bit, um, these multiple levels have a lot of energy for you um, as you do that traveling and as you engage people as you uh, do your TEDx uh, uh, presentation uh, and as you do your recordings and as you do your dreams. So what can, can you tell us a little bit more about these multiple levels of obsessions that, that have such uh, beautiful power for you? Oh, well, thank you, Royce. I think it was, it's all, in the name. My name is Viviana. And in Spanish, vivir is to live. It's also in English, you could say vivacious. So I, I have this quest and thirst and vivaciousness for, for living. And I, I just love diving into all my passions. One of them is swimming, which is why I love my mm. underwater seascape here. I love, I swim in the ocean. I swim two miles. Um, I live next to the Pacific Ocean. so. I just think it's important to find whatever we may be passionate about and to live it, smell it, feel it, embrace it and uh, to, to, its, to its fullest. And I think this is the key to happiness, at least for me. Mm -hmm. That's, I love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, I, it certainly has I, I was drawn into DreamWork in, in a way that I, I will never really fully understand. It sort of it sort of like became an obsessive passion. I mean, and, and it really it was it it was a unique thing to 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 feel that feeling of like, wow, you know, this I'm really going with this. And then I just kept going and I got de deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's been 25 years now and I'm still not bored. And I'm kind of like an ADHD person who goes from like thing to thing, I leave the dishwasher open and then go up and leave the closet door open and then all the door. I'm like, I'm not really focused a lot of the time, but this particular practice of dream work has just, it's, it's a place where I feel laser focused when I'm working with dreams. So that's helped me a lot. Absolutely. I can only uh, agree. I've been writing down my dreams since I started journaling when I was 13. I never knew what understood what they were about. And then I joined a dream, this dream group here in Half Moon Bay, California. And I just all of a sudden was yeah. able to see the dream from all these other angles. And I just thought, holy cow, whoa, this is a whole new world. I just I'm ready to dive into. So thank you 
to Billy and Royce. You've just given me so many helpful, amazing insights when in the dreams uh, groups that we've uh, attended together. So it's just been fabulous. And thank you for inviting me today to talk about one of my dreams. <laughs> so um, someone who has recorded their dreams since they were 13. Mm. Um, and 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 then is this is this correct that you said that only in the last couple of years you've had a place and a space to explore them uh, and 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 when I hear someone share that I mean it's very touching for me yeah. to hear that here's this self motivated being uh, a couple of years ago five years ago twenty years ago however old you are and at thirteen you started to write your dreams down and you didn't have a way to explore them and yet you honored them it, uh, i want to sneak a little parentheses here in in the dream world the dream is because it's multiple levels has a sense of of past present and future flowing back and forth all the time sometimes we see it sometimes we don't and also, I think there's a, a kind of, uh, without having a better term at the moment, there's kind of a predictive energy in dreams that at 13, if this were my life, I'm writing a dream down. And here I am much, much later, 50 years later, I'm suddenly working on this yeah. dream or I'm honoring the energy that brought back the dream. And so the dream is a gracious presence that gives us raindrops of dreams forever. And here you were, Viviana, at 13, writing your dreams down, and now you're having a, a conscious way of exploring the dreams. What is that like for a person to yeah. write dreams down at 13? What really spoke about what you just said was the predictive element of dreams, because I literally have had dreams through and through that were absolutely came to life. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess you call those precognitive dreams. Mm -hmm. um, so I've always felt that and my first one like that was maybe when I was 18. Mm -hmm. And then I had another one when I was nine. Anyway, they kept coming. So that's when I thought, man, we need to be listening to this stuff. <laughs> this is important. Yeah. And yeah. and even to this day, whenever I have an aha mo or what is it called? A, what is it called when you feel like you've lived through something already? Uh, deja, deja, vu. Vu. deja vu. When you have a deja vu, I just think for me, I've dreamt this scenario before. And that's why it feels like, oh, I've lived this already because I did in my dream. That's one of the theories about deja vu is that that somehow it appeared in, in a dream and that's why it feels so real. And so and that's why we get that wave of emotion and, and uh, feeling of like outside of time because we are we're outside of time. So speaking of time, do we, can can we hear your dream so that? Um, oh, yeah. OK, so I I have two little my dreams tend to be more. It's hard for me to get the whole entire thing. I get snippets. So I have one snippet of and then I have another snippet if there's time. So the first one, I am doing an underwater photo shoot in the ocean. I am to be dressed as a mermaid. Hmm. I am dressed and ready to go, but I am wondering when they will be ready for me underwater. I didn't want to risk getting cold by going in too early. But I also fear that if I wait too long, I might lose all the good sunlight. End of dream. <laughs> but I'm afraid that the, it ends with I'm afraid that I might lose all the if I, Good sunlight. Yeah, if I wait too long, because I don't know when I'm, I don't see my photographers because they're underwater already and I don't know if they're ready. And if I wait too long, the good sunlight might be gone. And so, and photography is all about light mm -hmm. and good light, especially. So as a 
as a question and putting it as if this is my dream. Uh, do do I do photography and do I do underwater photography? Is there <laughs> oh, Royce, I love you. <laughs> okay. I, I, yes, I am a photographer, uh, Viviana Guzman, photography.com. And I love underwater. So that's my favorite place. I, mm. I, I feel like I, I always say I learned to swim before I learned to walk. Mm. So I'm much more comfortable swimming. I can swim two miles much, e much more easily than I can walk two miles. <laughs> um, so, yes. I I have I, I recorded one of the, when the GoPros first came out, I did one of the first mermaid shoots, but before the mermaid tails became popular. So I'm not actually wearing a mermaid tail in this particular music video, but um, it was one of the first. <laughs> wow. Um there's a lot in here that about, you know, um if it were my dream, it, it in my version of this dream, as, as another way to say it, there's um, something about diving into emotion and diving in, it's particularly diving into the collective unconscious. Because as as I'm as we've you know discussed before, the ocean is so much different. You know, bodies of water are so frequently represented in dreams. A lot of times, it's yes. Just yesterday, I worked that dream with the river. And then there's often there's like you know, a private pond in the back of a home or whatever, but the ocean, the ocean is the grandma of all the water symbols in my version because the whole world shares the oceans, and the oceans are very very deep and they're very vast and 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 I always think about that plane that disappeared MH370 or whatever and they never could find it because it it crashed into the Indian Ocean and they tried and tried and tried to find so in other words it's impossible to investigate the entire ocean and so for me um oceans so often rep represent that collective unconscious and it sounds to me as the dreamer this is a place where I'm very familiar and I'm very comfortable but there's another thing going on here with these photographers and I have to think about the timing. And so there's something about um, if in my version of it, it's something about. Am I am I trying to include others in some in some exploration that I have of the collective unconscious and the timing doesn't seem to be I'm nervous about the timing not being right and we're going to lose the light. So we're going to lose and, and in dreams, light has so much to do with consciousness. So if it, that's what comes up for me. Wow. In, in my dream, uh, the, this ocean of, uh, of our primordial birth, uh, I, I submerge myself in this ocean and I'm recording something. I'm trying to uh, make sure that what I am experiencing is not forgotten. Ooh. And yeah. and the, kind of like uh, uh, the molecular. The <laughs> I'm going to invent a new word. The molecularness of who I am and all that I am within. Uh, is uh, uh, has a life of of its own and is wanting to be healthfully noticed. For me, I just it, in a part of of a sliver of this meaning uh, in my waking world, I struggle with our mass destruction of our oceans and mm. our earth. Yeah. And the pain that uh, I feel in a molecular way about all of this, and imagine how does the Earth feel, and how do all of us beings on the Earth mm. feel about this? And and so there's a sense of I'm going to lose. We have to have the timing. We have to notice this, or oh. we may lose the light. And and. 
again in in the ancient way of looking towards the east uh, towards the rising sun and receiving light we do not make light and yet we do because we have insight light full insight and yet the light comes externally and and so there's a sense of beauty and sorrow and urgency as i am experiencing the depth of this molecularness mm. <sighs> i oh my god oh my god i'm mind blown <laughs> is that an aha <laughs> ah! <laughs> I, I i recorded i recorded a cd Native American Indian flute, mm -hmm. where 100% of the proceeds go towards saving the vaquita porpoise, who there are only 30 or they're probably less than those that left on the planet. And they're the cutest, tiniest little dolphins mm -hmm. that live in the Sea of Cortez. Mm -hmm. <sighs> wow. So yes, time is of essence. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a huge uh, urgency there yeah. to save these these poor things and just in general saving mm. our poor oceans i mean the coral reefs all over the planet are failing and they're they're not getting the light that they need and yes yes so much of what both of you said spoke so deeply I, wow. go ahead Bill. i just wanted to write down the word molecularness <laughs> that's a great i'm gonna i'm gonna have to include that in something soon <laughs> the molecularness of no I, that's that was and i don't want to step on what royce wants to say go ahead royce and i'll say something later well uh, so in dream experience uh, and this is why i i am passionate about the projective uh, understanding of dreams that viviana you're helping us to experience in a in a very powerful profound way and the dreams are coming all the time for an external reason an external result so i think accidentally our cultures plural look at the dream as an individual experience and this is you know for my health and wholeness perhaps yes and this this really is a, a, a it's a dream story about a world and how we need to and what you are sharing how you need to preserve a species that the dream is calling multiple levels of callings for us to yeah somehow contribute to to the external world to preserve it and to save it and to to help it and and this is again the ocean uh uh is where we all come from right and and so this sense of globular universal uh uh holding of each other is vital and so the dream comes for viviana for royce for billy and for the earth then you know from uh, i had a friend ask me from from whence does the dream come or not whence but from where does the dream come who dreams the dream really oh yeah boy isn't that a question we could spend the rest of our lives talking about that yeah. <laughs> who is the dream ego and what's the point of it all i've actually had people ask me that what's the point of it all anyway you know and that's that's oh, that's so tragic to me when i hear somebody say that because i think oh unfortunately i if, as that person saying that i will do the projective here that means that i as i'm habitually forgotten my dream experience and have not participated in de delving into it so i'm missing all of this huge amount of wisdom and sage-like knowledge because i dismiss it as meaning nothing there's a couple of things I want to say real quick. Um, one is we kept talking about past, present, future. And for me, one of the things imagining myself as Viviana watching the TEDx talk and seeing the photographs of young Viviana and her body cast makes me think of the, how a, a mermaid is shaped there from the waist down the, the there's no legs. So is this is this also referring back to when I was 
that child stuck in in my having to heal and and not being able to run and jump and and I and I remember in the in the in the TEDx talk that you say finally they put me on put you on your um on your chest and you were able to play piano see I tingled when I said that because it just it's waking up something in me as as imagining myself as the dreamer because there's this is referring back to something about my past as well a time when I felt restricted oh my goodness Billy yes I had not put the mermaid tail as my body cast because it was like a tail it, it, because it went from my armpits down to my toes yeah. complete complete body cast and yes I lived on a hospital gurney I couldn't walk I couldn't mm. play I couldn't run mm. but when they turned me over face down and pulled up pulled me up to the piano I could play the piano so right. I always say that music healed my life oh. And to have this come up in this in the dream like this, oh my goodness, that's just huge. I, when you were speaking, Billy, I was getting tingles. I was like, oh my gosh, because I had never thought of my body cast as a mermaid tail, but that's it. <laughs> I can't and I have love legs. it. Yeah, I don't have legs. I have a fin. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So the listeners may need to know more about this story and where can they go and find out well i have a tedx berkeley talk that if you just google viviana tedx berkeley it'll come up and it's called oh my goodness i don't remember what it's called <laughs> turning adversity into magic mm -hmm. which has become my middle name because i was born unable to walk. I was never supposed to walk. And the doctors told me I would never walk, which is why I'm more comfortable in the water than I am walking. And I have undergone 11 major surgeries, at least before 2020, <laughs> because then I was in a car accident. And that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's another anyway, TEDx talk. That's your next that's another one. Yeah, the TEDx talk to, to, yet to come. Yes. Slow down on Highway 1. <laughs> <laughs> talk. Yeah, yeah. This uh, speaks to me of the richness of who we are with our life experiences and hearing a bit of that list of mm. life experiences, Viviana, uh, is, it, it gives me a lot of goosebumps. And, mm. and uh, I, I, I need to say, this to any listeners we don't rehearse this ahead of time and there are elements of viviana that you're sharing that we had no idea or at least i had no idea of and 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 so how the dream is inviting us to have this beautiful community of healing and how the dream also is yearning for health healing and wholeness for all of us and for you, the dream come true as a baby, as a child, a piano, mm -hmm. and, and how that began to uh, uh, nudge you. No. Didn't make you, but <laughs> excuse me. Thank you. Yeah, see, see I did it. Happens I'm to us. The word you. Yeah, how the, the, the piano nudged me to begin to find a way, didn't make me invited me nudged me to explore avenues of health healing wholeness and wisdom and here i am sharing this amazing journey wow well my first dream teacher dr ron used to say every dream knows where it's going to be shared and with whom and so i mm -hmm. this this feels to me like one of those moments where um we're sharing it to hopefully a, a much bigger audience, but however, whomever comes across this podcast and has a chance to watch it and or listen to it, well, well, I'm sure we'll have major ahas as well, because we've covered lots of things about, the, and, and again, we go into that multi-layered, multi-dimensional piece because the collective, we, the discussion about the death of the oceans comes into it as well. And I mean, I, I think 
I come from the understanding that the good news is, is we're dreaming about it because if we're dreaming about it, we still can do something about it. It doesn't become a hopeless, I'm, oh, well, there's nothing I can do about the oceans. I got to go home and, you know, forget about it. But, you know, it, the, it, because it comes up in the collective and it comes up in the conversation around the dream, it means that we all have an opportunity to, to do something about it. So that's, that keeps me hope, hopeful always. I need to say something right there. Here I am, a three-year-old in a body cast, mm -hmm. and there's something that the energies of life say, say, I can do something about this. Mm -hmm. And so, but you know, the doctors say, I can't walk. The doctors say this, and like, you know, doctors are good people. They're doing their best. And they accidentally thought linear instead of circular. And here I am being invited to grow, change, and heal in ways that are truly profound. Mm. And I don't have, to, and so there's something I can do about this. That's that sense of existential nudge that says, yeah, life sucks, I hurt, and how do I change myself mm. to create as much beauty, adventure, and meaning as is possible? Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. And that's when I started and I said, dive into, find your passions and dive into them. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I do. That's what I've always done. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're all given super, super challenges and life is a school. I mean, we're learning from these challenges and it, it's important to take the pearls of wisdom and gather them every day we get, we have those wisdoms that are presented to us. Some call them challenges, but I call them wisdoms. <laughs> and I love that this came out in this dream. I mean, when I had the dream, I was thinking more, you know, mermaid, because I just, I I have the long hair of the mermaid. And I've always, I, I, I was actually named after Vivian, Vivian, who was Merlin's mistress. Uh -huh. She was the bear of Excalibur. Mm -hmm. I don't have my Excalibur uh, and the Lady of the Lake. The Lady of the Lake. And for yes. me, a flute has become my Excalibur, my magic wand that has taken me to 133 countries after being told I would never walk. Yeah, that's good. They never said anything about flying. <laughs> that's good. That's fantastic. Or swimming. Or swimming, exactly. I've swum all the oceans of the world too, and I love it. Wow. Well, yeah. thanks for sharing your dream. Thank you. It became our dream too. So, as you yeah. Can... No, thank you. So I just, uh, you know, when I, as I said, when I dreamt it, I just felt okay. Mermaid dream. <laughs> How typical of me. Yeah. But you guys have uh, have given me so much more to think about, to chew on, to. Uh, uh, to, to just think about, to own or look further and to, this is fuel or uh, the seeds of my next tech talk for sure. Ah. <laughs> so Royce, did you have any closing comments? I was going to give the hot, the dreamer hotline and went, but go ahead and say something. If you have a closing comment on the dreamer. Oh, only to reinforce uh, the uh, wisdom of, of dreams and to encourage all of us who are curious about dreams mm. and those of us who aren't, uh, that these dreams are voting for us. They're supporting us mm -hmm. to nudge us in the direction of health, healing, fullness, and wisdom. Yeah, Billy, we, 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 there are people that want to leave a dream snippet. So would you tell us about that? Sure. We, we've set up a, a dream hotline <laughs> for, for, the, for the Healing Dreams uh, project. And it's 720-573-9195. So 720-573-9195. And you can leave a message, two and a half minutes or so. Um, that's about it on the length, but um, please, you know, give us a symbol or a, or a theme or, or a recurring it, dream 
image that you want to uh, want us to work with, and we'll we'll try to make it part of of a future podcast. Please also remember that for confidentiality, we're going to be using uh, the actual voice of the dreamer putting telling us the dream because I think everybody should should speak their dreams aloud. Um, so we'll use that audio on the podcast. So don't leave any identifying information that you don't wish <laughs> to go out to the public. And if anyone wants to get a hold of you, Billy, where might they go? Wake up to your And um, there's a lot of information there. And oh, and also I'm going to be actually today, I'm going to be uh, a recording an interview with the shift network, and they're going to be um, putting together a DreamWorks summit, which will go from October, uh, I'm sorry, October, not October, April 17th to April 22nd. Um, and I don't know exactly which of those days I will appear, but there'll be a lot of people in, uh, that'll give really informative talks and workshops about dreams and, and dreaming. And Royce, where can may one get in touch with you? Thank you. Yes, at RoyceFitz.com. And my contact information is there. I am a spiritual counselor and dream worker. Uh, and uh, relish the opportunity to be invited to step into the world of, of, of uh, whomever it is that calls and is curious to explore this journey of life and living and how we seek to do our best to create beauty, adventure, and meaning. Beautiful. And I'm Viviana. You can find me at viviana.org, O-R-G. And this has been the Healing Dreams Project podcast. Thank you for joining us and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.